What's up, everybody? It's Joe from Complex. We're in New York City at Stadium Goods with the legendary Tony Hawk. These are basketball shoes. And we finally had like a shoe of our own with Airwalk. Gonna do some sneaker shopping today. Gonna see what he's feeling, what he's not, and then hopefully he's gonna buy some sneakers. Yes, please. Let's go. Tony, I want to start with the movie The Search for Animal Chin. It was said back then that someone connected to Jordan dropped off a bunch of pairs for you guys to wear, and they were super cheap. The originals now that go for a lot of money. Do you remember yep. that movie and wearing these? Yeah, I don't know how we came upon them, but it was like, hey, we guys, these Nikes, and I'm pretty sure I wore these mm -hmm. and the white. The Chicago white ones. Yeah, Chicago. But over the course of that video, I ended up getting a semi-sponsorship with Vans. Okay. So in the infamous photo of all four of us doing hand plants. You're in Vans Skate Highs. I got Vans, yeah. And you know, I, we had no idea this is gonna be iconic. Right. Like for us, it was finally just free shoes. Like we were still skate rats and hoping to get free gear. And so the fact that Nike was stepping up and giving us high tops yeah. was cool, but we didn't think it was gonna be such a big moment in time. Was it a good skate shoe back then? And do you still think it holds up? Yeah, for skating, for sure. Because for our type of skating, especially, you wanted the ankle support. Mm -hmm. And we all skate vert, so we knee slide, and the toe caps were really resilient. So they were like exactly what we needed at that time. One thing, uh, Bones Brigade, friend of yours, Lance Mountain, got his own Nike collab. Yeah, that's SB amazing. On the Jordan one. What's <laughs> it like, you know, this was years past, but what's it like to see the crossover of someone that you skated with, came up with, getting his own collab? I love it. Well, I, I love that there's that, that type of respect for Lance mm -hmm. and, and what he has given to the skateboard industry and community, and that he gets recognized by a company like Nike for being a legend. Yeah. Because, you know, he, like Nike, Lance didn't have the best track record for competition or whatnot, but, but he truly brought fun to the sport. And for, to have Nike supporting him and to, to letting him do stuff like this, it's like, it's great all around. I think that it just shows that they really have their heart in the right place. Definitely. We talk crossover, your game, Tony Skate Jam. It's a long long line of video games now in your catalog and I remember a couple years you had Tyler the Creator and you actually put the vans that he wore and oh, the yeah. attention to detail. Yeah. How important is it for you to incorporate those details into the game? Very much so. I want to keep it authentic. Mm -hmm. So like my character in Tony Hawk's Skate Jam is wearing my Lakai Protos. Mm -hmm. My resurgence into the high tops and, yeah. and what started at Jordan's but basically went to Airwalk. Airwalk prototype mm -hmm. that, that really is the, the inspiration for what the Definitely. You know, Lakai Protos are. And really that's where people identify us most and that's that time and space of, of the Airwalk days because Airwalk was truly a skate shoe. Mm -hmm. Like Nike was, it was very cool. They gave us the skate shoes, but these are basketball shoes. Yeah. And we finally had like a shoe of our own with Airwalk. Definitely. And so that's what I'm trying to pay homage to with my Lakais. And of course I want to include them in the game mm -hmm. because it is what I wear when I skate. Absolutely. When I'm not skating, I'm wearing Riley shoes. Tony, we touched on Vans a little bit back there, but what do you think it is, the staying power of these? And you know, you coming up and, and skating in them, and now, decades later, people still wearing them with jeans, still a very hot commodity in terms of the sneaker culture. Well, I, I believe that was the original skate shoe. Mm -hmm. when, when I was young, like, I wanted Vans. Mm -hmm. Vans, Vans off the wall, Vans off the right. wall. And then I finally got a pair of low tops, which that's all they made back then, and I needed ankle support or ankle protection. Yeah. So they sold a supplement ankle guard. Wow. You actually would strap on and then it would go above the low top. Like it was so ridiculous. And this and was course, before high tops. Before high tops. Wow. So I would wear those with my low tops and eventually finally they made high tops. But it is, you know, it's an iconic design. It was original and so obviously it's the one that had staying power. Airwalk, I remember your Lakai signature shoe, the Proto, is a homage to Airwalk. And we talked about it over there, but I remember like coming up middle school and high school, all the cool kids were wearing Airwalk. Yeah. Like people may not realize how cool they were back then. It was a movement, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it represented skateboarding. And so we were really proud. I mean, I was, I created the trick, Airwalk. Yeah. They yeah. named it after my trick, you Amazing. know. And so I felt like a deep connection there. And, and one of my good friends was the shoe designer and he had free reign to do whatever he wanted. And Mm -hmm. He got a little crazy sometimes, but those were fun days. Definitely. It was the 80s though, you know, things got a little crazy <laughs> with your designs. You. Was there ever a skate shoe that didn't perform well for you? I, I never had a chance to try so many shoes mm -hmm. that I was gonna say, oh, this one doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Definitely some models of Airwalks were more for lifestyle, yeah. and not for skating. And, and we burned, you know, at vert skates, we burned through the toes and the laces so fast that like some shoes just aren't meant for that. Mm -hmm. I think the only shoe that I ever sort of regretted not 
getting to skate, I, I wore Pumas for a while because okay. Puma sent me a, some shoes and said, we want to talk about a sponsorship. And I really got used to them. And so I was riding them for probably a good three or four months. Wow. And then I said, yeah, we should do this. And they said, oh, we don't want to do it. <laughs> was it like the Puma suede, like the low profile? Yeah, black and red. Okay. One thing I want to talk about in the 90s when skaters were getting sponsored and you know the checks weren't as big as they are now, people were getting their sponsored shoes, going to skate parks and selling them to skaters. Were you ever around that? Is that happen? Uh, Did that happen? Well, for sure it happened. I mean, I, I, I didn't go that far with, my, with right. my shoe endorsement, but we definitely had issues with team riders on Birdhouse okay. getting, getting decks and then going to sell them elsewhere. And it was like, come on, you guys. Right. Like, we're trying to stay in business yeah. to support you. For the most part, the people that were doing and that didn't last long on their sponsors though. Okay. I know a few personally that got kicked off. <laughs> All right. And it was like, you're, I remember one guy, um, they told me this at PAL actually, mm -hmm. this guy kept getting, kept getting gear, selling it, giving it away. And then he came to get some more. And the, finally the guy said, look, this is what Tony Hawk got last month. Right. This is what you got last month. Out. You're out. Tony, I want to talk about your Hawk line that was in Coles. Very affordable line. Once you had all the accolades, was it important for you to develop a line that was affordable? Yeah, well, it, that's why. That's how we started Hawk Clothing. Mm -hmm. It was my siblings and I, and we all had little ones, and we just couldn't find cool clothes for them. So yeah. that was the catalyst for starting the brand, and eventually it made its way to Coles. And then when we finally got a shoe line going from there, it was exactly that. It was affordable skate type of shoes, but you know, and then eventually. DC and Vans figured out that market works, yeah, and pushed us out. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I want to talk. You went to the Blessed Supreme premiere. What do you think about a brand like that that is rooted in skate culture and now is ruling the streetwear scene? Well, I, I just love that it validates skating, mm -hmm. it, you know, across the board and and its core. It's not like someone's trying to package skating into some other thing and sell it to a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. They're rooted in skating. They support skaters, and so I fully back it. You know, I mean, the, the resale thing is crazy, and yeah. yes, it's all ridiculous, and and you know, it's excessive. But at its core, it promotes good skating, Definitely. and that's what I love about it. We talked about everything. Now's the easy part: get the browser shelves, see what you're going to take home. Yeah, I would love to get some stuff from my my focus group, my kids. Let's do it. I think these are these are for Miles, and maybe those. Black ones right here. Right over here? Yeah. So my son Spencer's more low key, I think black on black. Black on black, yeah. six shoe. And maybe these, if you got them. This is for our little surfer bro. Gotcha. Okay, I got one more pair for our buddy Morgan, so five total. So your total is $25.56 and 39 cents. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, thank you. All right, Have thanks a again. Day. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. So, the icon, Tony Hawk, came through, bought some sneakers. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks for showing me around. Make sure you get the Tony Hawk Skate Jam available on Google Play and the App Store right now.